morning. If you, uh, the Lord was telling you to surrender stuff and you still wasn't, somebody throw this in the trash for me. Thank you. You didn't surrender some stuff, just know that you can still do that. Amen? Amen. Um, I feel led to pray before Miss Shelley gets up here. Father, thank you. Not just for our salvation, that, that is, that's everything. But Lord, after you save us, you don't just stop there. My goodness, Lord, that's the beginning. And so, Lord, thank you for experiences. Thank you, Lord, for having your anointing walk in the room and it just causes people to reconcile. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. None of your powers or tricks will work in here. And everything you attempt to do, male or female, it will come back to you 30, 60, and 100 fold. Let that be a warning to you in Jesus' name. Father, may all of my flesh die, all of Shelley's flesh die. May your Holy Spirit speak, warn, teach. Encourage, empower, rebuke, correct, whatever you want to do today, Lord, this is your house. You just let us come here. Lord, thank you for the mantle and the obligation and duty and responsibility you mandate on a heart of a saint. Lord, speaking of that, thank you for the Southside Saints for being here today. Lord, may you protect and watch over them, greatly encourage them. Whatever horsepower their bike has, may you triple it in the spirit. Lord, we love you. We give it all to you. May your name and your name alone be honored in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> amen. Okay. The last two or three weeks I've been saying we're, we're going to have a former psychic median come, but she had a family emergency and she could not make it today. But if y'all want to look up her stuff later, um, her book is called Psychic to Saved. Um, her name is Jen Niza, N-I-Z-Z-A for the note takers if you want to look that up later. She's from up in the Northeast. Anyway, y'all be praying for her and her family. Um, so instead, I love this scripture. The Lord even made me eat this scripture this morning. Man makes plans, but God ordains his steps. You may think you have another way out of something, and God will put stuff right in front of you. Praise be to God, he does that. And so I, I know that this didn't surprise the Lord, even though it surprised us in King's Trail. It, it did not surprise the Lord. So uh, you see the title, Interview with Former Witch. We've done this once before years ago on a Wednesday. We never did it on a Sunday. So, y'all, please um, give a warm welcome to Miss Shelley. Shelley, come on up. Turn it on. Is it too close? Go closer than it was a while ago. Yeah, it's a little closer. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to read some scripture. One, it, it reminded me of when I spoke with Shelly on the phone and later in person over dinner. Um, the word she used, so if you would turn to Psalm 116. I want to read verses 1 through 14. And then another verse before we start asking questions because I woke up. If, if you wake up and there's a scripture running over and over in your mind, write that down because the Lord's trying to tell you something. Amen. So I woke up this morning with another scripture on my heart. And one of the reasons I feel the need to say these scriptures, one, to prepare not just Shelley but everybody to hear her testimony uh, through questions, but also 
Some people might be sitting in the crowd or listening online going, I've never seen any church do this. How is this even scriptural? And uh, just real quick, if you don't know, the Apostle Paul was sent to the Gentile. The Apostle Peter was sent to the Jew. And so it would be easily said today in 2024, the Apostle Paul was sent to the unbeliever. And the Apostle Peter was sent to the church, the church people who knew the scrolls and knew all these things. Kings Trail Cowboy Church is a church that um, is, a, is called a Pauline church. The Apostle Paul said, I become all things to all men so that all, by all means a few might be saved. So you might see a, something that appears to be a little crazy to you in this church that would not be seen in another church. Anybody want to say amen to that one? Okay. So in Psalm 116... Verses 1 through 14, the subtitle says, Thanks, man, Thanksgiving for deliverance from death. Anybody got a testimony here where God saved you from death? In verse 1, it says, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. The pains of death surrounded me, and the pains of Sheol laid a hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I implore you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. You know his throne, the cushion seat on his throne is called the mercy seat. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low, and he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, and therefore I spoke. That word believe in the Hebrew means absolutely firmly convinced of what they're saying is true. You now you say that word in the Hebrew? Amen. How cool is that? So when you hear Shelly speak, she speaks with confidence because she knows it's true. She believes, and therefore she's going to speak. She's going to speak into an area many of us can't. Hallelujah. God gave her a unique fishing lure. She's going to catch some fish today by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> says, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows. Everybody say vows. Vows, vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Sometimes when somebody gets born again, they didn't just get saved and filled full of his joy and his Holy Spirit. Sometimes God immediately places a mantle on their heart. It almost feels as strong as a vow like there is, you'll hear people say this, God has not released me. I must go do this. The Apostle Paul, within, within days of him being born again, was preaching the gospel in the temples. He didn't go to seminary. He didn't go to no school. He immediately started preaching. So sometimes you'll see somebody get born again, and immediately they feel a mandate on their heart. And when I was speaking to Shelly on, on the phone, she said, I told her what was happening in the cancellation and stuff like that. And I said, would you be willing to do what we did a few, you know, several years back, actually. And she immediately said, yes. I said, why'd you answer so fast? And she said, the Lord told me after I got back to North Texas, she said, the Lord said, time to get to work. Amen. And that's her expressing that vow. The Lord has convinced her. She, matter of fact, she'll say here in a minute, I'm not going to take up all her stuff. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter five. I'm a ball hog. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will be quiet here in a second. Promise. Ephesians chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 8, 8 through 14. This justifies what we're doing today. For you were once, Ephesians 5, 8, the subtitle says, Walk in light. For you were, once in dar you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. That, that's a sanctification process, right? We learn over time what is acceptable, what is not. What is acceptable, what is not. I was talking to the Lord last week. I was like, Lord, why is it? 
justification process and the glorification process instantaneous and the sanctification process in between is hard. He said, that's the only process you're involved in. Did y'all get that? The, the, literally, the, the justification, that has nothing to do with it. Immediately, Holy Spirit justifies you. Just as if you never sinned, you get born again, confess Jesus as Lord. You go to die and be with the Lord. The Bible says absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. Glorification has nothing to do with us and has everything to do with him. Sanctification is us resisting God. Amen. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, verse 11, and have no fellowship. Ever say no fellowship. no fellowship. With the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. So the Bible tells us to expose the things of the dark. But then it gives us a limit on it. Verse 12, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. So what she's doing is not speaking of things that are shameful. She's, what that's talking about to the church of Ephesus, there's a lot of sexual immorality going on in the church of Ephesus along with witchcraft, and that's a part of the testimony. You just had to um, get with her by yourself and talk to her because that'd be a private stuff. But there's parts of our, all of our testimonies that should not even be talked about. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. But there's sometimes it is because it draws fish, lost fish, to the gospel of Jesus Christ where they get born again. So that's what we're doing here today, praise be to God. So question number one, Miss Shelley. What got you into witchcraft and further became an actual witch? It's okay, take your time. When I was 11, my dad became a Christian. And um, religion was forced upon me. My father was preaching and teaching and stuff. When I was 15, I got pregnant and my dad found me sexually attractive. Those words came out of his mouth to me and he started to molest me, still standing behind the pulpit. I didn't understand. I didn't know where God was. And I asked, Where's God? Where's God in all of this? And so I turned my back on God when I was 17. And I met someone that opened the door to being a witch. And then for the next 25 years, that's what I did. I was a witch. And I said this last service, my parents don't even know what I did. They just think I did some weird stuff. They don't even know I was a witch and a teacher and things of that nature. So I did it because I turned my back on God and when people would speak to me, you know, Christian people would speak to me they would try to tell me stuff, and I'm just like, when well, you can tell me where God's at, why well, God allowed all the stuff to happen to me, if he's such a God of mercy, why? So when you tell me where God's at, I might consider what you're talking about. And I can't even remember how old I was. I don't know. I was in my 40s. Um... I had gone to the Goodwill store and I saw a whole set of books and I bought them all and it was the Left Behind series. One night I decided I was going to start reading and on page three I hit my knees and I saw Jesus' feet and I saw the bottom of his garment. And I reached for it, and I became a Christian. That night, I called my father, and I asked him, what do I do? And he said, go to a church and get with the preacher. And that's exactly what I did. And I came here, and I was introduced to Jason, and Jason was like, I want to know your story. And the next week, he was having a birthday dinner. His mom was cooking special food. Fried pork chops. And he, he invited me to go, and I gave him my story. 
And then after that, we became buds, and I started speaking to the church. And the first time I spoke to the church, Bubba asked me to do it because it was his turn as a lay pastor. And it was during Halloween, you know, time. And so I spoke to the church for the first time. And I specifically gave my testimony then. And then a couple of other times happened and we interviewed, you know, like the news or whatever. I got interviewed. And so today I'm doing it again. I'm getting back on track with my message. Amen. Thank you for doing this. No, it takes courage. Um, when somebody like me hears the word witch, I only, I think very elementary, like a black suit with a hat in green, kind of like the Wizard of Oz. Can you describe what witches really are? And maybe, uh, she explained it to me the other day at a restaurant that there's actually witchcraft has different denominations <coughs> like Christianity. So can you kind of explain that with some water? The, no, um, just clear my throat actually. Okay. Um, I imagine everybody in here has heard the word Wicca and Wiccan. Actually, that's like being a Baptist. There are different denominations of witches, and they all have different names, like Lutheran, Episcopalian, like that. So, um, when people say, were you Wiccan? I'm like, no, I was pagan. I don't believe in organized religion. And I had a hard time, and I was a solitary witch, so I did everything by myself. When people ask me, well, what, you know, are you Wiccan? And I'm like, no, I'm pagan. Just like in the Bible, the pagans worship golden gods, all of that stuff. That's what I did. I pulled from everybody's religion and put it and made it mine. Being a witch, I was considered a gray witch, which means I knew black magic, but I practiced white magic. I was on that line. Um, white magic is still magic and it's wrong, but I worshiped nature. I did a lot of things in nature, did a lot of stuff for nature. Um, but I did cast spells and I did do ritual and I really celebrated Halloween. And Halloween is a witch, witch's new year. Kind of like December 31st is our New Year's Eve. Well, that's exactly what October 31st is, is witch's new year. And they start the year off with a huge party, a huge ritual, and they do stuff. The reason why is the veil between the two worlds is thin. So the spirits are walking through this veil and walking the earth. And we know spirits are demons. So there's demons all around us on Halloween because the veil is thin. And witches use the power of those demons to do other things with them. Would a witch think it's a demon, though? What would they no, call it? No, they think it's a ghost. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be your relative or, you know, your best friend or whatever that is passed on. That's the way they present themselves. And in, in that world, you were considered a high priestess yes. and they actually called you clergy. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Yeah. Teacher, clergy, pagan. Um, I was all, all of those you tell everybody the story once you got born again you had a lot of uh witchcraft baggage and mm -hmm. i think that would be encourage people on what to do with stuff not just you can be in here right now and not be a witch or a warlock or a necromancer or psych or any of that stuff and you can still be dabbling in stuff which is just as dangerous um probably more dangerous because you really really don't realize what you're doing so can you kind of describe the papa g bonfire <laughs> um, I had a storage shed, and uh, 
we actually was coming back from paying the bill on the storage shed. And I'm like, that's our storage shed. So we drive over there and it was completely empty. And there was a man that had a trailer and he had some stuff on it. And I'm looking and none of my stuff was there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, I was very upset and you know, everything happened. I became a Christian and I met Papa G and Bubba and um, I was invited to the house and I'm sitting across the table from Papa and uh, he's like, you don't know who I am, do you? And I was like, no, sir, I don't. And he said, your storage shed? And I was like, oh. And he said, once we realized what was in that stuff, we burned it all. And I was like, oh. You know, because I'm thinking of everything I had at one time. And I said, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not. He said, you were mad. I said, I was mad at the fact because we just paid that storage bill. <laughs> That's why I was mad. And he goes, okay. But I'm very thankful that they burnt all my stuff. I'm very thankful that I got to meet them because they opened the door to God as well as this church and Jason. Everybody I met was like, oh, this and this and this. And I totally, the darkness that left me got filled with God. Hallelujah. And so. Amen. <laughs> and I, I asked first service because sometimes people were like, well, what's the point? Why don't you just throw it away? Who cares about burning it? What, what would you say to that? You have to destroy it. Anything that is not of God needs to be gone. And really, the only way to get rid of it is with fire. Um, you're filled with a fire for the Lord. Fire does destroy and take away. And that is exactly why things that you have, you're not supposed to have. You, you need to burn it. Don't throw it in the trash because somebody else is going to pick it up if they dig through the trash. So you have to destroy it. And the only way to do that is with fire. Amen. I'm glad you did destroy it. And I pray one day we have a huge bonfire here and we destroy and burn all kinds exactly. of witchcraft. We've awesome. already done it um, four times this year. Uh, in the last almost 16 years, we've only done it twice ever with close supervision because we didn't know what we were doing. And we were making sure we... You don't just run up on that stuff and be like, well, I'm born again Christian, ain't going to do nothing to me. Well, you just gave certain permissions, and now it can if you're not careful. There's nothing to be afraid of. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But you get, you imagine somebody has had, this is fight number one, they climb in the ring, how they're going to do with a guy next to them, fight number 482. Which one's naturally going to know how to fight better? And when the Bible says fight the good fight of faith, that is sure enough getting in a fight. And it'll, it'll manifest in weird different ways. So um, I don't, I'm not trying to strike fear anybody. I'm trying to actually have, show everybody to have respect and reverence because there's a reason why the enemy's thousands of years old, not giving him any glory whatsoever. But the Bible says that there is a kingdom of darkness. So um, if that's you and you have witchcraft stuff, I... It, it would bless my heart before you leave. You come drop it here at the altar. We'll burn it for you. Yes. And because we're serious about this, this drags people down two, three decades of people's lives. And it seems like it's fancy and nice and innocent, but it, it is straight up death. It is straight up death. Um, speaking of that, uh, Shelly was one of the first people that had this conversation with me. Um, but this church used to celebrate trunk or treat, um, different kinds of alternative ways to celebrate Halloween. People would show up and they'd be all dressed up. And not just her, there's a couple other people inside the church that came up to me with different testimonies than her, but similar in witchcraft background. And they were, if you want to know somebody that is coming to correct you in the Lord, they are honoring, they are respectful, they are gentle, they are kind, they use scripture. And once they've given that word to you, they're released from it. It's up to you if you want to keep doing something. And so she came and doing, exercising all that, all the, those characteristics. And, and I want her to describe Halloween to y'all 
um, how she used to maybe participate in some things and, and how they view it. Um, because after I heard her give some of the testimony, I thought to myself, this is a real life thought. I thought, there's no way I can celebrate Christmas or it's Halloween anymore. There's no way I can do this. But then I was sitting there going, can I be blunt? I went, crap, I got to go home and talk to the wife and the kids about that. That's a whole nother fight right there. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've actually thought of this. You're like, I'm convinced, but man, you got some Jerry Springer stuff going on in my house. <laughs> and so we want God to give everybody wisdom on how to do this. It took like three years for us to completely stop celebrating Halloween. It wasn't just like cut it dry. There had been fights in the house. And so please describe. This is a part she could spend four hours on, but maybe 10 minutes describing Halloween and given what you know about it because that's an area you can speak into that none of us can or many of us can't Okay um, There are people that believe that Halloween is just an innocent thing and that nothing's going on There are certain aspects of Halloween that have a history to them Let's hit on trick-or-treating the Druids, which were men, lived in the woods over here and village over here. They would go into the village and impregnate women and then go back to the woods. Children would be born, they would be raised to a certain age, and then they would go to the Druids. The Druids would mass them and give them a bag and send them back to the village to ask for food and libation. Libation is drink, whether it be ale, meat, milk, didn't matter, but they asked for all these things. And then they'd go back to the Druids, they'd take the food and drink and put it on an altar and then sacrifice those children that ask for it. That's how trick or treated started. And so that's what your children are doing. They are going and asking for food. And they are coming back into your home. And the devil is like, hello. And he said it in the previous weeks that when you do that, that the devil comes into your home. He doesn't really deal with the children. He attacks the head of the household. So if you're sending your children out there to trick or treat, they're just putting lots of stuff in those bags and they're bringing it back into your household. Yellow, I mean orange and black. We know that black stands for darkness. Orange uh, stands for an ember, a light. This goes with jack-o'-lanterns. Gourds were cut Candles were put in them. They were used as uh, flashlights because witchcraft was uh, against law and nobody could practice openly. They would take these little gourds, you know, like, I don't know, acorn squash, little gourds, and they would walk to a certain area in which all the other people were coming and they would celebrate their witchcraft. But the legend behind the ember in the jack-o'-lantern, a man named Jack talked to the devil. The devil said, if you do this for me, I will give you this ember that burns every day, all day long, for the rest of your life. That ember was put in a carved pumpkin, and they're called jack-o'-lanterns because of that. So the fire inside of a pumpkin that's been carved out is from the devil. It's not a cute little thing and special pictures or any of that that you put on pumpkins. That's the devil, all of it. So Halloween is not supposed to be celebrated. It needs to be rejected and it needs to be out there that it needs to be rejected. God did not want this to happen, and the devil wants it to happen. Satanists say they're happy on that day because Christians celebrate the devil just like they do. So 
is that what you want to do is have a Satanist be thankful that you're celebrating who they worship and believe in because that's what Halloween is and it starts with the children so it's not innocent it's not anything and you don't want to be walking around with orange and black on or ghosts or black cats or any of that because it's all of the devil plain and simple and it's not an innocent holiday it's a holiday where the devil gets to run rampant and take everybody on a ride and they don't even realize it because they think it's simple and innocent so amen thank you for that what would you say to the christian because I, I i used to be this christian that would say this i would be sitting in a church if i heard this and going give me a break this is so silly you know i don't dress my kids up as evil i don't run around a campfire in the middle of the route in the middle of the woods with a red cape or nothing like that right. that's dumb it's no big deal what would you say to that as a christian you know we kind of don't want to have anything to do with satan um, we're taught that satan's not good and if you're a christian and you celebrate Halloween, you might as well call it Satan's Day. So you're celebrating Satan's Day. And whether you want to believe it or not, it's an evil thing. And it's practiced by evil people that walk in darkness. And so as a Christian, I would say Halloween's a no-no. Plain and simple. Amen. I'm looking for the scripture in James chapter 1, if y'all want to help me. It talks about sin when it gives birth, gives birth to death. Can somebody help me find that? Mm. 115? Okay. Y'all turn there. Thank you, Jordana. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Um, we kind of talked about this somewhat first service. It, at the very minimum, if you don't believe anything she's saying, it is planting a seed in your children's life. And every, I, this is probably the, one of the analogies that works best for my brain, is that when a child is... I don't know, two or three, and they got a little sassy mouth, and they're like, oh, she's just like her mama or just like her daddy. Well, it's cute when they're three. It's not cute when they're 18, right? Because now it's all grown up, and now it's all grown up with muscles and intellect and, and its own will, and it can actually turn around and hurt you if not kill you. And that's, I believe, one of the tactics. When it, the, the Bible says in Ephesians 6 um, against all the wiles of the devil, all his tricks, he loves to present something that seems so uh, non-important, very innocent, not a big deal. And it might not be a big deal at first, but over the seasons, um, it, it's becoming worse and worse and worse. As a matter of fact, it seems now that how, I, this is one of my first old man stories. Halloween's not like what it used to be in the aspect of to now, now it looks demonic, pornographic, and mocking. I mean, you look up, just don't believe me, just when you leave Google image, 1970s Halloween pictures and, and 2024 Halloween pictures. And the costumes are, have lost their, their mind. And even though that any costume, the Bible says, Apostle Paul said, the devil goes around what? Masquerading as an angel of light. Literal, literal translation, he dresses himself up to look nice, and he's the one that's the serial killer that will kill you. And so... Um, that James chapter 1 is always an analogy that, that blessed me and helped me understand it more. Uh, Shelly, uh, you gave a strong testimony to our women's group years and years ago because the ladies immediately came and told me about it. And then I asked you more details about it later. Um, and this encouraged me as a Christian about how much you can be a witness for the light of Jesus Christ without ever opening your mouth you, you testified that when you were a witch, you could tell immediately if somebody was a Christian, and not only if they're a Christian or if they're lost, you could tell 
if they were super close to Jesus. Can you explain that to everybody? Um, okay. You've heard of the word aura. Well, those are colors, and they're there, and they're not really bright. But if I ran across somebody that was in church, believed in Jesus, they glowed. They had a light around them. And like we could be in front of a church and people would be leaving church and it would just be a bunch of light. And so I knew, I knew that these people believed in God and I didn't know what that meant until I became a Christian and realized that was God. That's how I could determine that they were Christian or not. Everybody else was dark like I was, so there wasn't, they looked normal to me, but not the Christian. How powerful is that? She even said one time that uh, she knew she was demon possessed when she was a witch, at least at some point in time, and that sometimes the demons inside her would tell her to cross the street and get away from some Christians because the light of Christ was so strong in them, the devils were afraid they'd be cast out just by being near them. Christ is a form of protection. That's why I said a couple weeks ago, I believe in the end times, some people will come to Jesus, not because it's the love of Christ. Some will come because it's the protection of Almighty God. The Ancient of Days, once he, gets a, once he has a hold of you, he can protect you. But that, that was super encouraging when you said, that's why, um, well, I'll get a little freaky here. Some, that's why sometimes you pay attention when you go to certain places if people just turn around and leave real fast. Sometimes it's not because they don't like you. Sometimes it's they don't like who is inside you. Yeah, what, it, what is that it's, thing where it says, your, your Jesus irritates the demon inside of people? That's exactly right. Yeah. And then in the scripture to back that up would, would be, the, for the people of darkness do not come to the light, lest their deeds be exposed. Amen. And so this next part, um, I felt led to two. Everybody say two, please. Two. Y'all even said please. Good job. Um, two questions from the congregation. So if you have a question for Shelly, you can get up right now. Just walk up here. There's one, and there's two. There's two already. Y'all come on. Uh-oh. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Just hold the button down and hold it down until you see the light. That'll preach. Hear me? Yeah, go ahead. So, what things in our home... Good question. ...that we as Christians or just people that don't walk in the darkness or however you want to say it, um, would have in our home that we don't realize that could be demonic or have opened the door for the evil spirits and stuff to come in? I spoke to a teenager a while ago. Um, horror movies, books, and it, I mean, even romance novels. You have to clear those things out because they're all of the devil. I mean, scary movies or horror, um, they're horrifying and why? Because the devil's like, let's look at this. Let's look at blood and stuff. So you want to clear things out like that, that even though they, you've had it for 20 years, it's still, if it's not of God, then you need to get rid of it. You have to ask that, is this of God? And if you don't feel it is, then ditch it, tear it up, break it up, whatever, but get rid of it. Another way before second question, um, if you're born again, raise your hand. Okay. Just uh, when you're alone in the house or when you're with your spouse, um, you can just say, just hold each other's hands, say, Lord, if there's anything inside this house right now that is not of you, um, just show it to us and walk around your house and it'll be the strangest thing. You'll get angry at certain objects. Mm. You know when the Bible says do not mourn the Holy Spirit? 
But you can also anger the Holy Spirit. So you'll wonder, why am I getting angry or sad at an object? That makes no sense. That's Holy Spirit telling you, um, get rid of that. And so um, there's, there's, there's a long list uh, of things to get rid of inside a house. And, and, but I, I think it's best if everybody has that walk with the Lord, because one, you're immediately going to see that the Lord will talk to you. And second, he'll specifically tell you the things of your own house. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. This isn't my question, but on top of that, of course, the movies and those kinds of things are just kind of obvious. Mm -hmm. But my question is like lights that you put in your yard. Mm -hmm. That I have another question, but I'm on top of that one. Okay. Shall you uh, speak into that? The, like ornaments you have outside? Like ornaments you have outside, lights and stuff. Halloween lights, um, hay rack rides, cool. pumpkin carving. Oh, yeah, pumpkin carving. Well, that those kinds of things. Yeah, any pumpkin type of carving. Halloween type stuff. Anything. I mean, a hay ride is innocent. You can do it all year round. But if you're doing it because you're at a haunted house, or if you're doing it because it's a Halloween party, then no. But, I mean, you can have a hayride any time of the year, but it's very prominent in the month of October. Because perimeter lights are okay? Please tell me that's not of the devil. No, perimeter, perimeter lights is okay, but if you... I'm like... <laughs> de Christmas lights are okay, but if you're decorating anything for Halloween, I mean, that's a no-no. Hallelujah. So You have another question. Okay. I do. Yes, ma'am. Um, my question is... When you were talking about the dark and the light, um, did you actually see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, when you were talking about other witches mm -hmm. and their different levels, did you actually see them or were they spirits? Were Actual they people witches? like you and I? Actual witches or the, are you talking about the light and the dark? The light and the dark is I saw people that were, at that time, I considered religious. But as far as witches, there are signs that people let you know they're a witch. I'll just throw this out there. You ever see a purple door on the front of a house? That's a witch. If you ever see a broomstick on top of the doorway, depends on which direction, it lets you know if they're there or not because they actually flip it. Anyway, that's another sign of a witch. If there are things like dream catchers or wind chimes that are mystical looking, um, fairy wings, fairies, any of that, that's not a god. With these things that you're talking about, if we have no ill, no evil thoughts behind or even right. at all, like a child, why would that be so bad? It's, I'm sorry. It, okay, I'll put it this way. If it's fantasy, we'll just say fairies. If it's fantasy, it's not of God. Even though you go out and get it in innocence, it is still not of God. Um, children that have imaginary friends, they're not, not there. They're demons. Those demons have names, and they entertain your children because they're pure. So things like unicorns, fairies, gnomes, trolls, all of it is something to attract a child. I don't know if I want to say that no, word. Okay. Like a pedo, they do things to draw children to them. So the devil in, gives these children these things. Oh, it's a unicorn. Yeah, it's of the devil. It's not as innocent as you think they are. What would you say to somebody that's listening right now and said, I don't have anything 
behind me or in me of evil. Last question. But I'm still doing these things. And uh, you know what? Yeah, I don't know if I believe this. You can put it back over there. Thank That's, you. Uh, if they don't want to believe it and they don't want to change it and they don't want to take things out of their life, they have to deal with God on that. I am trying to educate, and if you don't want to be educated, that's on you. But you will have to deal with God with it because he gave you somebody that's telling you the truth. It's out there. It happens every day, and you have no idea how close it is to you. Uh, there's a coven right outside of White Rock. Mm -hmm. And, um, what is a coven? There's a coven. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, we say covenant, but why do they say coven? It's a coven. It's a group of people. And, you know, the devil takes stuff and turns it for him. And a coven consists of 13, 12 maidens, and one high priest. Let's think back. Twelve disciples and Jesus. So a coven is taught. Um, it is a group of people. They all have one mindset. It's called a hive. And they live together. They practice together. That's what a coven is. Anyway, they're taught. And then they go out and hive another coven. And that's how they spread, kind of like a Ponzi scheme. Discipleship. Just, yeah, it just grows and grows. But yes, it's. A, yes. I didn't like it. I didn't want to be a part of one of those. That's why I did my own thing. Good. Um, I know you said only two questions, and I apologize Strong for this. Voice. But um, what about like giving candy to the kids who come trick or treating on your door? Don't do that at all. Just no. tell them, just send them away. That's what I was saying. Those children were sent out to gather food and drink, trick or treating. So you don't want to engage in that because you're giving children to take to sacrifice. Whether that's what they're doing or not, that's part of trick or treating is to ask for those things. It is not innocent. It is following the trail of history as, last as to why it happened. Right after service. You can okay. ask anything after service. Yeah, I'll sorry. be here. Or it'll be one more question until 4 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all. Okay, I keep seeing me ask this. And when I ask this, um, you don't have to participate if you don't want to. But I'm trying to be obe obedient to the, what I feel the Holy Spirit saying. If you are a witch or a warlock or a Satanist here right now, will you stand up, please? If you were here and I said that, would you have stood up? Yes. I would have been very proud of it. Good. Okay. Can we all commit to pray? Even if you disagree with Shelly in this church about participating in Halloween, can we? Raise your hand again if you're born again. Can we all commit to pray that God saves the witch, the warlock, the pagan, yes. the Satanist, all this necromancy, witchcraft, and all that stuff? He, the, Shelly's given us more prayers. Lord, invade their coven. Invade their coven with your covenant. And they're hot. Oh, if we can get the prayer in. So, hallelujah. Shelly, um, what, what words would you tell uh, anybody that lived that life like you did, that is currently a witch, or any of those titles that they use? What would you say to them right now? Because I, I believe there's probably some in here right now, and I believe there's some watching online. What would you say to them? I'll give an example. My husband was a part of a group of people, Norsemen, and um, there was a guy that was a leader, and I wouldn't participate in anything that they did because I was Christian, and I didn't do that anymore. And he would make fun of me, and I would tell him, 
God's watching. God knows what you're doing, and you're going to have to answer to him for that. So why not just put all your energy into learning about God than to do what you're doing? And he's like, because this is what I am. This is who I am. I said, okay. A month after I came back from Kansas City, I got a phone call, and this man had turned his life over to Jesus. Hallelujah. And he taught his children, and his children, one of his, his oldest child is confused, and he's fighting that battle. And I told him, pray for your child. You caused this. So you need to let him have, you need to give him to God and let him stay with God so that his confusion will go away. What I would tell people is the same thing. Jesus is the ultimate person. There are no other gods or goddesses above him. And so you, you need to lay what you're doing down and follow the true God, the true creation the true person that's going to elevate you. No magic or anything is as powerful as Jesus Christ. Amen. What would you say to the children, the ones in elementary school, middle school, and high school? You're killing me. Oh, <laughs> do I need to stop? No, no, I'm trying to keep from crying. Oh, but... no, I cry all the time. Get okay. out of here. I'm, I'm going to put this out there before I answer that question. Well, real quick. Okay, as, a teacher, okay. as a teacher, I taught children that God did not exist. So the first year I was a Christian, it was very hard for me because I did that to children. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Now, I want to educate children in the right way. And so for every child out there, and I'm calling 16 and 17-year-old kids children, because that's what you are. This is not fun and games. It's not a thing you need to participate in. And even though all your friends and all that stuff is doing it, you're going down the wrong path. And if you know Jesus... The Holy Spirit's going to let you know you're not supposed to be doing this. So don't do it because your friends are. Step out of that and step in line with Jesus and say, that's not a God and I can't participate. Because when you put that word out there, those kids are going to follow that. They're going to want to know why. Amen. So you, you're opening the door to witnessing to your friends because they don't understand why it's not a God. So... Follow what Jesus says. Amen. That's a good word. The, the last scripture I felt led to read, I, I, I fought the Lord on because it's so well known and so common. And also wanted to give some time for uh, Shelly to maybe speak to some people afterwards or pray with some people. Because um, we have a funeral here today at 2 p.m. But the scripture, as soon as I read it, we could probably all quote it. But the Lord, when I read the Bible, I'll write notes in it. And uh, I'll write parts and, and just little highlighters and stuff because it's not just the word of God to me. It's, uh, it's my Father in heaven speaking. And he put this scripture on my heart. And then I heard him say something. Man, if you could hear the Holy Spirit's voice, you won't ever need to listen to a preacher. He's the greatest preacher. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever, everybody say whoever. Whoever, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And when I read that yesterday, I heard even the witches. That if they would turn from their wicked ways and they would just call upon Christ. She wasn't in a church. I'm so thankful 
This is going to sound really weird coming from a preacher, but I'm so thankful that you were not born again in a church because no church or man or ministry can take credit of it. Right. You, God, only God I, takes credit for causing you to be born again. So let me say this. You turn your. No, it's on. Is it? It's not working. Okay, well, I'll tell you and you repeat it. Wait. I'll get you. That is the phone. first verse I learned by heart. Oh, now it's working. Oh, you hear it? Okay. Yeah, say it again. That verse is the first verse I learned by heart. Well, hallelujah. That is what I went That's by. That's why he told me to do it. Yeah. I tried <laughs> to tell you last service. <laughs> anyway, but now it's Romans 10, 9. That's something you need to dive into. Hmm. So that's the one I go by now. But that one says it all. Without Jesus, you're not saved. And you need to be saved in order to delight in the joys of heaven. Hmm. And that was the first verse I got. And it oh, meant a man. lot for a long time. But this year, since I've grown a lot in Christ, Romans 10, 9 is the new verse. Yeah. Read it. Work it. <laughs> You'll know. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Um, even if you're not in witchcraft or something crazy that we've been talking about today, if you don't know Christ, just know that you cannot go to heaven if you think you're just a good person. You must be born again. You must repent and believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And if that's you today, you can call out to Christ and be born again and even be baptized. We always keep our water trough full. But before I close in prayer, I wanted Shelly to... Would, yep, sorry. One last time, and then you can go relax. Would you pray for um, not just those who are in a lifestyle that you are in, even the ones that might accidentally dabbled in it. And please, 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 I think God gave you anointing for the kiddos. That's why the devil tried to get you to teach them lies. Would you pray for our children too? Yes. Go ahead. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity. Please cover our children with your wings so that they're protected from the arrows of the enemy. And for all of the adults and the young adults, please do the same thing. Protect them until they fully get the knowledge of why this is happening. Lord, I ask that you cover each and every one of us and you bless those that are trying to find you, but they don't know the steps. For those that walk in darkness, please, Lord, Show them the light. Show them a beam of light where they have no other choice but to hit their knees and ask you for forgiveness. Lord, with all the things that are going on in the world, please open the eyes of those that they need to have opened. Please be in everyone's heart and love them completely and hold us all in your hands. It's in Jesus' name I ask these things. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for Shelly. Thank you for her boldness and courage and anointing that you've given her. What a beautiful mantle and obligation you've placed on her heart for the month of October and this testimony. And, and uh, Lord, we pray that you just uh, greatly empower her and fill her up with your Holy Spirit for her future speaking engagements. And just may it flow as if she always imagines she's just on the front porch talking and she's very relaxed. Lord, we pray... Um, say amen to everything she prayed for and um, Lord thank you thank you for Calvary it's by your blood we're saved in Jesus name amen. amen in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace amen, amen. God bless you we love you if you need prayer ministers please come or if y'all want to talk to Miss Shelley y'all come on down <laughs>